how do you know when a curve is too much curve? When it, when uh, it comes to- tells you. Well, uh, what I'd like to do is explain it uh, using these props because it's, once you see how it works, it becomes very clear what exactly is going on. An erection is really a, a hydraulic event. It's blood filling up the penis, and this model demonstrates it with air. Uh, the penis is more like a tire than like a balloon. A balloon will get bigger and bigger the more you fill it with air, whereas a tire will get bigger and then it just gets harder and harder. But for the purpose of demonstration, this is a normal unaffected penis, and as it gets filled up, it straightens out oh. and increases in size and girth. I've now let's take a look at the- Never pronoun. been so jealous of a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to make a poodle out of it for you? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very severe case of Peroni's. <laughs> now, this is the Peroni situation. This black square represents the Peroni's plaque or scar. This is scar-like tissue. It's not a true scar because it's not necessarily from a cut, but it's tough, fibrous tissue that won't stretch like the remainder of the tissue that surrounds the blood that fills the penis. The tissue of the penis is very interesting because it's very, very strong, yet it has some flexibility. The peroni scar has no flexibility. So if all the rest of the tissue is stretching and that one part is not, you get an angulation. And let's see how that works. So as the penis is filling, you jealous, Travis? <laughs> it takes a bend. And that bend is because that area would not stretch the same way the normal tissue would. That bend can be quite severe. It can be straight up. It can even go back. Um, Dr. Gelman. It can be lower down too. It doesn't. It's not always in the distal end. This is true. Sometimes it can be a hit. wasting, like an hourglass in an area of weakness where the penis gets floppy, or because of the abnormal tissue, the blood may flow in and leak right out. So there's a whole variety of manifestations. Dr. Gelman, in this particular case. Would you mind telling us how severe the bend was? Well, in this case, the bend was approximately 70 degrees, so... 70 degrees. So you had wow. not had sex in how long? In three years, a little more. Wow. I really yeah. found out about it about five years ago when I first determined it. So, wow. so three years initially and after the first year or two, it kind of gave up and for the last three been waiting years. three years. How much longer does he have to wait? <laughs> well, we suggest six weeks after surgery. So okay. he has to wait just a little, <laughs> little bit longer. Yeah, the longest six weeks. Yeah. So five weeks and five days. Yeah. Get that calendar yeah. out. But that's, that's when, I, you know, I see a lot of men with Peyronie's disease, and Dr. Gelman is a, a brilliant surgeon, and we have uh, patients in common. But it really is a, a very devastating condition because uh, outside of surgery, there's very little that is effective, and there's not a lot of people that do the surgery very well. And so most men kind of languish, and uh, they can be depressed, and it can really kind of take over their whole life experience or self-image. So it's really remarkable what you've been able to do here. The, the takeaway here is that if you're experiencing painful sex or you notice a new bend, do seek treatment. And the other big thing is that if you suffer during sex a, a hard injury to your penis and you're worried it might be fractured, and usually you know, get help right then and there. That's a true medical emergency. Dr. Gelman, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Robert Paulette, best of luck to you. Thank you for sharing your story.